things first, or all former All-Pro and Heisman Trophy winning running back Eddie George hey, joins sir. the show. Hi, you? Eddie. Oh, it's a pleasure. Oh, it's a pleasure. Great welcome, to welcome have you. To, um, yeah, this, is, this is gorgeous. It's a place we call first things first, but for now, for this segment, we'll call it the Heisman House. The Heisman oh, House, yeah. All right, I like that. <laughs> I'm comfortable with that. Uh, all right, Eddie, we've been talking a lot about Ezekiel Elliott this mm. week, why the Cowboys didn't use him more in the early part of the season, despite only gaining 54 yards this past week in a loss to Houston. He still leads the league in rushing by a considerable margin. Cowboys are 2-3 and three with a heavy load of the offense on Zeke's shoulders, which prompted Zeke to mention that his lack of production at times can be a little frustrating. So I ask you, as a former running back, why is Zeke frustrated? Talk me through what's going on with Well, him. he's not used to running through the holes that he was used to running through his rookie year when he rushed for 1,600 yards. And that's because he had uh, Whitney and he had uh, Des Bryant on the outside who could, mm -hmm. who could stretch the field, who had the threat of stretching the field. He may not have shown it in numbers, mm -hmm. but at least he was out there. Now he doesn't have those pieces and parts. And now they're going to have to lean on him week in and week out, maybe touching the ball, uh, probably a total this year, close to 400 mm -hmm. yards put in passing, and excuse, catching the football and running the football. And they're going to have to lean on him because he's their best player. And that's where the frustration lies. I've been in that situation yes. with the Titans. Right. You know, I mean, I had to touch it 400 times a year, 300 times a year because of our lack of success in the passing game. And that's and that's where the frustration lies. He's going to have games like that, and he's going to have some great games as well. Right. You, you mentioned the Titans and your great career that you, that you started there. Mm -hmm. Kind of give us some of the similarities. You and Zeke both coming uh, from Ohio State, yeah. used to carrying the workload, but I knew Eddie George, and Eddie George was happy to see Steve McNair when yes. he started to develop, yes. Whitecheck when he developed as a tight end, Dyson, Dyson. as a as a wide Derek receiver, Mason. Derek Mason. Mason. Right, right. What is Dallas doing to Zeke and his career? Because I believe with the lack of uh. explosive players, they're altering his career arc compared to what yeah. it could have been like a player like yourself. I, I, listen, I, I, get where, I get where you're going because they're going to they wanna have to lean on him a lot more right now. I think through the draft, uh, through free agency, they're going to have to address those pieces and parts. They get uh, Dak Prescott, some, some explosive players on the outside. they got to find a tight end who can control the middle of the field. That, that's the mm -hmm. bottom line. You can, you can deal with a guy that's not explosive on the outside, but you got to have a tight end that can create matchup problems, that can convert third downs, so it's not all on Zeke to constantly get the third and ones, or he's the receiver. And, I mean, it's going to wear and tear. I mean, the guy was limping off the field the other night, and I kind of I, I, I know, know what he's going through with that whole situation. Well, you know it better than just about anybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, it basically since Earl Campbell, I would say, which obviously same organization or at yeah. least organizational structure as yours, like there hadn't been a running back who had the level of carries you had mm -hmm. that didn't break down immediately after. We saw guys do it for one year. Larry Johnson did it for a year, yeah. broke down. Jamal Anderson broke down. Well, you can go down the list. What do you think was it about? Was it anything you did that allowed you to deal with it? Or was it just what just innate because what would you tell Zeke on how to deal with a potential 400 touch year or is it just it was just in you you were just I would touched. tell Zeke to have a chiropractor a masseuse therapist an ice tub everything get to, get your get your rest because it's going to cause it's going to come down to taking care of your body the best way yoga whatever mm -hmm. it takes right. to get recovery because they're going to have to really rely on this that's what I did when I played and it wasn't tough every Monday Tuesday, I was dealing with some type of injury, whether it was a cracked rib, a uh, busted toe, uh, knees, shoulders. I mean, you name it, I had the issue. But it, it, it takes will and desire to do it. And I think Z can be, get, definitely get it done. But the organization, they're going to have to address supporting, supporting mm -hmm. with some other players that can take the pressure off him so he can have a longer career. Is there another way they can support him? I mean, we've sort of changed from your ear. We're no longer really seeing that no workhorse running back. We're mm -hmm. seeing more of the dual threat yep. to maybe save them a little bit, let them pass a little bit. And we talked a little bit about that at the beginning of the season, that they use Zeke more like that. Is that another way that this organization can help protect him a little bit? They can. I think they bring, they have uh, other guys that are bringing off uh, uh, the, the bench to help Zeke with the workload. Mm -hmm. But he's such an Rod explosive. Smith, Rod Smith, another, another, another Buckeye. Buck take some of, those it's, it's some of the carries. But it's going to be difficult 
uh, to win games that way. They need 21 on the field. When he's on the mm -hmm. field, whether he's at 80 percent, 70 percent, he's the best player on the field for them. And he's the best option to score and move the chains and control the game. He helps their defense because he's constantly moving the chains. Right. Um, give us some of the, the things, the intangibles that you see mm -hmm. in Zeke that you think which make him special and the reason why he's going to have a long career. Because you talk about running back, yep. you like Todd Gurley, you like L. Bell, but there's some things about Zeke that you think are just a little exceptional as far as running backs. His runs uh, after contact. He's constantly going forward. He makes that contact. He's breaking tackles. And that's what I like about Ezekiel, his ability to jump cut. I mean, everybody talked about the offensive line for Dallas and how they were able to open up gaping holes. But when it's not there, he's creating his own hole. And that's what makes him special. He did a jump cut the other night against uh, Houston where it wasn't there, bounced outside, and still got four or five, ten yards. Mm -hmm. So he's able to do that. That's what makes him truly special. And he's, and he's, a, he's, a, he's a, a load to bring down. I mean, when he hits you, it's like a linebacker hitting you. And that's how I, I, mean, I love running backs mm -hmm. that imposes their will on defenders. And that's what he does. You mentioned your Titans teams with Steve McNair and mm -hmm. rest in peace. He, he, he missed, uh, he didn't miss, he sat his first two years. Uh -huh. And when he, when he first started playing, he was not the guy he was. Right. But when you guys went to the Super Bowl, mm -hmm. when he won a league MVP. People, yep. that, so how did you see Steve progress? Yep. And when Dax, obviously very different, played immediately, his best football was immediately and has seemed to regress. And are there any things Dak, anything Dak could pull from the way Steve's career went that you could say? Well, I'll just say with Steve, um, he, he kind of struggled earlier on with injuries. Mm -hmm. um, he didn't uh, have the confidence. For With a quarterback, you have to have confidence. I mean, there were times when the fans would boo him early in his career, and he, you know, he was giving his, his all. It wasn't until um, I got injured and the offense kind of flipped and they had to say, okay, to go through him. we have to go through Steve, and we have to get the pieces and parts that make him comfortable. And for him, it was running back by committee. It was getting five wides. It was mm -hmm. opening it up. It was allowing him to get on the perimeter, be an athlete in the space. And then... You watched his his knowledge, you know, from you know grammar school in terms of being a quarterback to being a PhD. You know, he was doing manipulating defenses, mm -hmm. calling it out, running his own plays at the line of scrimmage. So it was it was uh, it was over a two year period we were able to see him once they ran the offense to Steve McNair. We're trying to figure out, speaking of quarterbacks, who Dak Prescott is. I think a yeah. lot of people have an idea who he is this year. We thought we knew after that first year looked great. Of so course. step back in that second year. Listen. And now this is the year where we're like, listen, which way is this, it going to go? Listen, defensive coordinators get paid a lot of money in this mm -hmm. league. And at once, once they get like a year of body of work on somebody, they put those red dots on you on Wednesday. Yes. They're going to they say, okay, he likes to do this, 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 and this. We're going to make him beat, beat him. Let's see Dak in the, in the, uh, Prescott in the pocket. If he can beat us in the pocket consistently, then, okay, we'll give him that just due. But he can't do that right now because he, they took away the blanket and the security it blanket really and witness. It seems like you think that the Witten surprise oh, absolutely. hurt him. Oh, no question. It, it sure did. That, I mean, Des Bryant hurt, but, but Witten really hurt because you saw the big plays on third down. Witten would get open. You know, mm -hmm. he was an old man still, still yes, getting open on these young guys. And it, it, he moved the chains for them. And it was another option. Uh, other than Zeke, to try to turn out those third downs. He was he was that guy he could rely on. So um, what we're seeing out of Dak right now is he's in that, that the crossroads of saying, okay, he's taking a couple steps back as a quarterback, but now he's got to find ways to win games off a pure will and, and hopefully galvanize those guys and develop them to um, – get the, the big plays for them downfield. So. Eddie, tell us a little bit about the organization that you're working with right now. Yes. Uh, a I know you came yes. here just to see the Buckeye. I know <laughs> that. Yes, yes, yes. New York. Let me go back on my Buckeye. I came, I came to see Chris. Right. I came right. first. We get a slice of pizza and talk about ball for Drop a few votes for Haskins as high as Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I really like him. <laughs> Dude, that's, that's, that's a whole yeah. other story. Yeah. We call the football segment. Yeah. Yeah. No, ball four, I've been an ambassador for them for about a year now. Now. There's a program called Thrive. It's, 
is they partner with uh, middle schools, high schools, universities, colleges through various programs to help inspire uh, young, the youth, uh, to motivate them, to build leaders through various programs throughout the country. Um, it's been an amazing job. They, they hire um, uh, uh, great motivational speakers. Um, they, they really do a great job of keeping everyone accountable of, um, of being great leaders in their community. So I've been a part of this great deal, and, and that's what I'm here for. He's been a leader no matter where he's been. I was at his first practice at Ohio State. He came over from Valley Forge. I was like, who's the guy from the Bengals on the Buckeyes? <laughs> so I've met him since then. He's been a great example for Buckeyes out there, young and old, been a great example in the NFL, mm -hmm. the multiple places there in the NFL, always has been a leader and a role model. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Man, Chris, always a pleasure. Thank Congratulations you. on this. It's Thank you. Really nice. Thank you. Thank you so no much. Man, Eddie, no thanks a million. Appreciate you being here. Got to take a break. Coming up, we'll talk to Aaron Rodgers. Is his injury the Packers' biggest problem? That's next on First Things First. Y'all did it to Penn State.